Well, like I told you, we want to now discuss matters financial inclusion. And if you care to find out, financial inclusion in Kenya has been actually growing at a very increasing rate. And we have with us in studio Dr. Anastasia Mizoriant from Intermedia will be helping us understand some of the trends we've seen around financial inclusion, as well as giving us a status update of how Kenya is performing against other countries when it comes to financial inclusion. Welcome to our studios. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. First and foremost, a lot of viewers would like to know what really is financial inclusion. I would have to say it's a difficult question because uh, depending on what are the goals of specific organizations that want to work in financial inclusion sector, mm -hmm. the definitions, working definitions specifically, might vary significantly. Yes. In our case, uh, we are looking at financial inclusion from the perspective of access to a variety of financial services. Mm -hmm. um, and that means that we would like to see more people using their own accounts, mm -hmm. registered accounts, yes. be it mobile money, mm -hmm. SACO, uh, microfinance institution, or banking account. Mm -hmm. And the benefit of having a registered account and um, the contribution of it to the financial inclusion is that a person who has a registered account has access to a variety of um, financial tools saving tools so mm -hmm. that they can um, set aside some money and be prepared for financial adversities, for example, floods or medical emergencies. Yes. Um, borrowing credit lines so that they can get money and start their own business mm -hmm. and don't strive to find formal employment, but rather create their own employment and then expand and employ other people as we see plenty of examples. Investment is another uh, great financial tool mm -hmm. uh, that is accessible to people who have registered account. They mm -hmm. can invest in government bonds, in stocks, in other people's businesses and benefit from that and earn additional money. And insurance is the last of uh, the tools, but not least. Insurance is another very important tool that helps to uh, prevent disasters, cope with financial adversities. Mm -hmm. People who access um, financial services through other uh, people's account or um, banking agents, mobile money agents, while they do benefit from the ease and convenience mm -hmm. of those services, they do not get access to these four tools that are really important for um, lifting one up from, from poverty and helping people to seize opportunities and expand um, and improve their well-being and mm -hmm. the well-being of their communities eventually. Mm -hmm. So from a perspective of uh, research that um, I lead at Intermedia, we look at financial inclusion as the ownership of financial accounts at a variety of different institutions. Interesting. Um, Anastasia, looking at Kenya as a country, we've been on the global stage, quote unquote, uh, a number of companies looking up to Kenya when it comes to financial inclusion, bearing in mind we have one of the most popular platforms in the world, the M-Pesa. I know at Intermedia you do quite a number of research issues related to financial inclusion as well as agribusiness and um, a host of other topics that cut across various countries within East and Central Africa. Let's zero in on the aspects around mobile money. As a country, how are we faring when it comes to the use of mobile money, um, percentage-wise, if you can share with us the numbers? So at Intermedia, I serve as a regional lead on a very interesting study that looks specifically at financial inclusion. It calls Financial Inclusion Insights Program. Mm -hmm. And the program has been uh, running since 2013. Uh, we do annual um, surveys, um, nationally representative surveys in um, initially four countries in Africa. We started with Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda and Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because of the high interest in the program, we recently added Ghana, Rwanda and now we're launching um, Senegal, uh, Benin and um, Zambia mm -hmm. with the possibility of launching other programs. Mm -hmm. So the goal of this research program is to look at all of those countries from a perspective of financial inclusion, uh, financial behaviors and with the goal of listening to the consumers 
understanding what financial behaviors are, yes. uh, what people use, how they use different products, and advise the providers of the products and donors how to feed the needs of um, their potential and existing consumers better. Mm -hmm. So mobile money is part of this program and actually a really big part of the program. Mm -hmm. uh, based on um, our 2014 um, survey, 63% of uh, Kenyan adults um, have registered accounts with mobile money, mm -hmm. which is um, really high mm -hmm. compared to other countries. And I think the beauty of this Financial Inclusion Insights program so is this, that... Sorry, sorry to budge in. This simply means out of, um, let's say, 10 people, six people are using the, yes. uh, the mobile money platform. Slightly over six people, yes. Slightly over six. Have okay. accounts. Uh -huh. However, the use is, is much higher at um, 70 plus percent. So mm -hmm. there are um, quite a number of people who are using mobile money through either their relatives or neighbors mm -hmm. or through mobile money agents. Uh -huh. Looking at mobile money and the penetration of this, what would you say is the key driver where we are seeing a lot of um, people opting for mobile money, being in the rural areas, urban areas. What is the key driving factor really? Um, I would say the key driving factor, um, there are several. So one of it is the purpose of using mobile money. So person-to-person uh, -person transactions remain the key driving force. Mm -hmm. The majority of people to whom we talk, they uh, register their own account because they wanted to receive money from somebody else yeah. or send money to somebody else. Yeah. And that includes people, sometimes we also see uh, people registering for an account because the organization where they work requested that they have a mobile money account so mm -hmm. that they can get a salary or some of the benefits. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect of um, mobile money uh, being so um, popular and so successful in this market. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is the um, logistics of using mobile money is significantly easier than that of using a bank. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a secret that in rural and remote areas is still very difficult to find um, a branch, a physical branch. And even when people reach the physical branch, mm -hmm. because the branch um, serves usually several rural locations, you have to arrive there early, stand in line. Um, yeah. It takes it takes sometimes a full day, two days, three days, where you reach the branch and you get your money. So mm -hmm. it's not as convenient, it takes a lot of time. And what also we see happening that people who don't have a bank account and have to travel to get their money, they usually withdraw all of the money and spend it really quickly. And what we see with mobile money that when people know they can access their money at any moment they want, yeah. just find a PASA point or a PASA agent or an ATM, mm -hmm. they tend to keep some of the money, set aside money. So they're spending and their planning of the money that they receive versus the expenses is much wiser mm -hmm. and it's more conscious versus I'm here at the bank it took me three days to get here. Mm -hmm. It took me three hours to stand in the line. I better just take everything and leave with this money. And then money gets just spent. Interesting. I know from looking at your reports, about 28% of Kenyans have uh, bank accounts. Yes. Um, this is quite a small number compared to the 60 plus percent you've mentioned when it comes to mobile money. Any reasons behind this? There are several reasons. So um, one of the reasons I would say um, is stereotypes that exist about the banking system. So for example, when we do uh, qualitative research, we often hear something like, um, the bank is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. I cannot come to a bank hall in my gumboots because I would look silly, it's mm -hmm. intimidating, the bank is all covered in marble, it's too, um, it's too intimidating to be there. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is there are stereotypes and misunderstandings about the fees that are attached to having a bank account. So mm -hmm. um, sometimes people do have understanding of how much they are going to pay. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. But there is a number of urban legends because the bank penetration is not as high yet. Mm -hmm. People rely on what other people tell them, yeah. how much it's going to cost. And sometimes the uh, misinformation spreads really fast. Um, there are other things like uh, banks are for rich people only and it's a status thing versus mobile money that's for everybody. 
Interestingly, um, though, we do see um, Equity Bank coming up a lot as the bank for the people. Uh -huh. So the mass um, market. Yes, the uh -huh. bank for people in Gambus. Mm. So that's that's an interesting distinction of um, mm -hmm. the equity bank. But generally, banks are perceived as the status affiliation. So mm -hmm. when you reach something in your life, then you are uh, banking with the bank because you have the money, you have the attire to go to mm -hmm. the bank, and um, you are somebody in this life. Interesting. I uh, want us to sh uh, shift gears a bit and uh, talk about comparative analysis between us and let's say Uganda how are we doing in terms of uh, financial inclusion um, interestingly Kenya is doing much better than any of the countries where we are um, running our program right now as I mentioned earlier when we talk about for example 65 percent of Kenyan adults have a financial account is it high or is it low how do we um, understand that? So the fact that the program is done now um, in um, nine countries in Africa helps us to build this progression of financial inclusion where we understand where each country stands against um, other countries. Mm -hmm. So Kenya is leading in Africa among the countries where we serve with 65% uh, having um, a financial account. Who is coming closest the to us? The second one, that is not really close is Nigeria with 49% and then following um, Ghana with 48%. Mm -hmm. But what is interesting about West African markets is that in those markets, um, the penetration of mobile money is low compared to Kenya and the mobile um, financial inclusion is driven by banks. Banks are very strong. Banks in West Africa offer a variety of products and they offer digital products so technically um, in Ghana, for example, if you have a bank account, you have a mobile app attached to it or online banking that's convenient to use. Mm -hmm. There are more bank branches. Um, banks overall have a stronger hold on mm -hmm. um, West Africa. With mobile money, um, Nigeria is really the last country among nine countries where we see only 12% of adults even know about the service. Wow. And less than 1% use the service through agents or through mobile money. Interesting. In, in Ghana, it's a little bit higher, but still uh, very low. So 63% in Kenya have a mobile uh, money account and 17% in Ghana. I'd like us to wind up. We are actually out of time. I'm looking at what Intermediate Africa is doing in the continent. Um, I know you're working on the other reports for various sectors. What should you expect moving forward? We know that a number of companies have been struggling with issues of data, having access to reliable information. Um, what is your plan in terms of bringing on board more companies as you wind up this conversation? Uh, we are open and thank you for asking this because we have been striving to disseminate our reports and information really widely in all of the countries where we work. Uh, we hold um, annual events to uh, launch um, the reports and talk about the data, but we're always open to questions and conversations. So what we actually would like to see, and we invite anybody who is interested in um, different issues related to financial services, financial inclusion, mm -hmm. and consumers to come to us and ask questions that would help them to be uh, more effective in what they're doing in the market. And in most of the cases, what we say, if you ask a question um, that will, um, for which the answer will help you to be more effective, ask us and we most, in most of the cases, we'll have the answer and we'll be happy to help and um, provide you with the information. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Anastasia Mizoyans, for coming to join Thank us. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, shedding light into, all, into uh, actually this important topic about financial inclusion. She mentions that they continue to grow their focus in the Kenyan market as well as the other regional markets that they serve within Africa. That brings us to the end of our show for now. I'll be coming back at about 3.30 p.m. with the latest on what's happening in the money markets as well as in the stock markets. Well, my name is Abi Agina. On behalf of our entire crew, we say a big thank you. Coming up next is News Hour.